Hello and welcome to a new episode of 1360 English. Myself, Dr. Anup Matthew, and today we are going to discuss about multi-state cooperative societies. We know that uh, uh, the last year, uh, government of India passed a um, act for a multi-state cooperative society. Even previously, uh, before that itself, uh, multi-state cooperative societies were in existence, but uh, an act that abiding with uh, the multi-state cooperating society that came into force last year. So what was the basic intention behind that act? So the first and foremost intention was to leverage the existing cooperative society in such a way that they can operate in multiple states. So that gives a lot of advantages to both the societies as well as to the customers. For example, if you are forming a society uh, uh, in some company, to say that's an Indian Oil Corporation. If Indian Oil Corporation employees forms a society in uh, Mangalore, the same society can act in Mumbai, in Delhi and in Chennai also. The, in such a way that the entity remains the same. So what's the advantage of that? Rather than forming separate societies in various cities when we form one society and that uh, operates in different cities the total corpus and the, as well as the total number of members in that society will be on the higher side so the total business volume also will increase that eventually reduces the risk associated with that particular entity this is a basic intention and to regularize uh, the society also that was one intention. So in this uh, juncture only a large number of societies they have registered as multi-state cooperative society in the past few months. That exactly happened. In the past few months huge number of uh, uh, cooperative societies, multi-state cooperative societies that has been registered. and. Uh, Maharashtra is the highest number of cooperative society that is registered. Apart from that, in Karnataka also a lot of other societies are there. So what is the basic nature of a society? So basically societies are meant to finance for a, a particular purpose. For example, if someone is uh, forming a society uh, for agriculture purpose or maybe sugarcane farmers, in that case, that particular society will accept money from the members or so called uh, sugarcane manufacturers or farmers and they will give finance to them for the uh, uh, for farming or even for the uh, sugarcane processing. So that's a closed community but at the same time that's almost helps like a self-help group. But unfortunately when it comes to existence of this uh, multi-state cooperative society nowadays especially in the past one to one and a half years what we are seeing is this is almost like a finance company. So one entity that may be acting for a financing for farming purpose that may be incorporating there in a, uh, to say Hyderabad and they are spreading their branches pan India and they are accepting a lot of deposits. But uh, there is no clue about how much volume of lending they are doing. And uh, to tell the fact we are very much unaware about their business model also. So at this juncture, many many people they have asked to me, uh, both uh, through the messages or directly they have asked these kind of uh, multi-state cooperative society that's operating in every city. Are they safe to invest our money in that societies or not? So. This background only today we are going to analyze this multi-state cooperative society. First and foremost thing I want to clarify a few things about the society because some of the multi-state cooperative society they are recruiting a lot of agents to get the deposits and these agents are knowingly or unknowingly giving an impression to the investors or prospective investors that the all the deposits that you are going to invest in this multi-state cooperative society that has been assured in by the insurance and the sorry depositor insurance and credit guarantee corporation DICGE but this is the same case that for banks 
for cooperative banks and uh, normal commercial banks this is true but on the other hand when it comes to society digc is not giving any assurance on your deposits that means if this particular society uh, goes for a uh, insolvency or what to say bankrupt or when they find that has been dissolved you are not going to get any money from digc on the other hand if you deposit that in the cooperative bank or any commercial banks up to 5 lakhs that has been assured by digc this is a one perception that many a people has cooperative banks and cooperative societies both are different in cooperative banks your deposits are somewhat assured up to 5 lakh rupees but on the other hand in cooperative societies your deposits may be in the form of rd may be in the form of a, a savings bank account may be in the form of fixed deposit whatever it is that that are not at all assured by dsi gc basically if a bank goes uh, bankrupt dhsi gc gives an insurance uh, to an amount up to 5 lakh per customer this is not available for societies i hope that's clear to you now let's verify what are the advantages and disadvantages of this multi state cooperative societies the first advantage is easily you can get funds for your use for example if you are if you are planning to have a loan to say 5 lakh or 10 lakh rupees when compared to commercial banks or any other nbfcs this cooperative societies give uh, loans based on the nature of business for example if you are a rubber farmer and uh, a rubber farming society is there you can go and ask for uh, some funds for your next uh, crop just by showing your property and not much of uh, any other legal formalities one other advantage is since majority of these societies they are charging higher interest rate since uh, they are offering loans uh, in a very lucid way the rate of interest for the deposit is also high when compared to commercial banks so these are all the two advantages when it comes to disadvantages one disadvantage is obviously dsigc deposit insurance and uh, credit guarantee corporations insurance is not available for societies so if uh, something happens to societies your money will be lost if you are an investor second disadvantage is majority of these societies accounts or books or pnl statement or none of these things are not that much transparent and there is a higher probability of manipulation also on the other hand if you just look on the commercial banks or to some extent up to nbfcs also if that's public public limited company their accounts and everything are being audited and that's available for public but these kind of smaller societies generally that's not that much transparent and there is a higher probability of manipulation so the investors won't get a correct picture of their financial standing one of the practical disadvantage what we have seen with uh, many uh, customers that uh, yeah, if you are going for some uh, recurring deposit rd schemes majority of these multi state cooperative society they won't let you to go for a pre closure or even for fd also they won't let you to pre closure in case of exigencies also so they may uh, find one reason or another reason to postpone it because they already had invested that money for some other purpose so they can't easily raise funds from that on the other hand in bigger banks that's not a great issue liquidity is not at all a concern but in these kind of societies liquidity is always a concern so as an investor this one you have to keep it in mind even sometimes we have seen that their fine prints terms and conditions are also not that much democratic in nature they may print something and uh, get a signature from the from their customer or investor while they open their account in that sometimes they may have seen that at any point of time they won't give the uh, uh, pre closure they won't entertain so that also in that case also liquidity uh, matters a lot one other thing what we have observed is majority of these multi state cooperative societies they are not at all interested to, to offer loans to the customers 
even even if you go through the multi state some of the multi state cooperative societies website also they are not mentioning about uh, loans as their product only investments why so or in other words in simple terms how they are making money from the deposits that's a main concern usually banks they make money by lending the funds to the borrowers but here lending is not the main business then what they are doing that's a concern so what we have observed is uh, states like karnataka or uh, maharashtra this money has been used for some other businesses so that underlying business when that goes bankrupt there's a high probability of getting into bankrupt for the societies also you so you should have an eye on how they are generating revenue also when you invest your money with some finance company make sure that they are generating steady revenue from stable sources if their mode of creating revenue is from a very in unstable or uh, risky sources there's a high probability of your deposits also at risk now you may ask how we can identify good societies unlike banks or nbfcs rating agencies will not rate the societies so option for that is not at all available no crucial rating no care rating nothing like that but on the other hand the register of cooperative societies they grade the cooperative societies as a b c and d in that grade a is relatively good so if you plan to invest your deposits in some cooperative society make sure that that belongs to grade a not anything less than that this is the one and only way for you to identify the financial standing of a cooperative society apart from that most probably majority of their agents will give a good good picture about the society so that's all for now see you in the next episode till then bye from anu